Hi, so we're back again. We just came out of the, the uh, segment that I did on flashing with two different colored gels, the green and blue. And as it happens, a particular print that I used to demonstrate that technique really presents a, a really nice, subtle little problem that I like to take care of um, in the darkroom. And, you know, we're getting into an area now where the, where the problems that I'm trying to illustrate and to demonstrate are so minor uh, and subtle that uh, not only with the video, but I also am going to include JPEGs at the end of the, uh, the video to highlight exactly what I'm talking about. But with, for this particular segment, we're talking about some densities up in the sky, across the sky, that are inconsistent. In other words, as you move away from the uh, center of the print, you've got a little bit more density in the sky. So the first technique I would try, even before dodging um, any of the uh, density off of the side, would be a technique that um, I've used for years and years and years where I heat up the developer. Ordinary developer that I use to print, uh, make the print, I just put in this little uh, two ounce uh, shot glass type of thing. I put it in the microwave for, for 20 seconds. It spins around one time. It's right there in the front. I pick it up and as the, develop, as the print goes in the, uh, the developer tray itself, I have this hot developer and I also have this one inch foam uh, brush. It doesn't create a lot of tension or, or surface um, drag on the uh, print, but it does allow me to continually apply and reapply and reapply hot developer. So I would do that progressively across the top of the print, you know, trying to feather out and balance that um, that inconsistency of density across the top of the print. So there's a number of different ways that you could attack this particular problem. What I'm saying here is for this particular problem, the first trick I would try would be the hot developer. And if you've never used it, uh, I can highly recommend that you can really get into little tiny areas, zero in on adding a little bit more density so that your eye doesn't become distracted because of it. So it's a good trick to, uh, to have in your toolbox. So hopefully you're going to be able to see this little area that I'm talking about. It's really from the peak of the house and it gradually goes over to about here where the density is a little hotter than it is on the outside of the print. That's the area that I would try to feather in right in this area with hot developer. And naturally I could drag the developer a little bit farther, a little bit more inboard depending on the results that I'm seeing in the developer tray. That's the first trick that I would try with this particular problem. So we're back over with a print that um, I chose to illustrate what um, Hot Developer can do. And I worked very hard to get um, this upper portion um, to print with just a hint of gray tonality. You may or may not be able to see it in the video. And as I say, we're into subtle, uh, we're into subtle corrections now that I'm going to scan so that you can uh, see them exactly as well as have the video camera come in and, and zoom in real close. But what you're gonna see is across this top area, here and even down in this little section here, you're going to see that, it, that the highlights are very near paper base. There is a little bit of gray tonality to them, which tells me that the threshold has been broken. Now, I made a second print, identical exposure, identical uh, paper and everything, and I put it up here, and you're going to see where the tonalities across the top here, where I've actually put the hot developer, as they say, it's a little difficult to see in the video, but in person, it's very clear that some density has been added to these highlight areas. And, you know, the, the measure of a, of a good, fine silver printer is you have to have detail in most every area of at least the light values. So this is why the, the, the hot developer technique is very, very important. Talk about that area. So here we, we have a close-up, and you can see across the top where there's added density, and even in the, uh, the part of the paper that was underneath the easel blade, you can actually see that that's even taken on a little bit of, it's, it's not quite as brilliant as the, as the uh, print on the top is. That's an indication that the developer has had an impact. And, you know, while maybe an entry-level photographer, darkroom worker might say, well, why don't you just print it darker in the beginning? Well, as, you, as you've learned throughout uh, all of my videos, my whole process is geared towards mid-tone contrast. And the more you have to print in something with green light, the more you lose mid-tone contrast. So that is essentially why, the big reason why I will use these little techniques, flashing with different colored gels and also uh, painting with hot developer, is to preserve mid-tone contrast. 
So what you see here are the two prints that we had in the darkroom. One um, print did not receive any hot developer whatsoever. That print is in the background. The print that overlays it is the one that has hot, had hot developer. Now the red arrows that you see are actually uh, portions of the silver gelatin paper that were underneath the easel blade, both on the front image and also the one on the rear uh, image. The rear image looks much brighter. It's whiter. What you see in the front image where the blue arrows are is where I've painted on Hot Developer with the foam brush that you saw in the video. And look at the red arrow on the front image that's overlaid the, uh, the rear image. Even the, the area that was under the easel blade has taken on a slight amount of gray tonality. Even though it received no exposure under the enlarger whatsoever, it received Hot Developer time and time again um, you know several applications and you can see there's actually a hint of tonality that has been um, imparted to the uh, to the paper now this is a very important trick for me especially when I use the split toning um, component where where you have a bleach process at the beginning you know sometimes it's a very intricate and very careful uh, amount of uh, tonality that is removed in the bleaching process you want that to be restored in the toning process and this hot developer has really helped me um, get a handle on just how much tonality I can withstand being taken away I hope this this little hot developer trick uh, helps you in your uh, quest for fine prints I know it certainly does in my darkroom